Intermediate in Johannesburg, this is the real Kanye Report. City Lodge Hotel Group's new Quartet Hotel Waterfall City in Madrid, which opened on March 1st, offers a full dining experience, a move away from a breakfast-only offering. This represents the vision for the group moving forward, Tasneem Bubulia tells us more. In addition to the new dining experience, the four-star hotel also encompasses a new design concept in terms of its interior design with South African themes and contexts throughout. Courtyard Hotel Waterfall City General Manager Brandon Latuch expands on the other features of the hotel. Uh, we have 168 rooms, of which 88 are operational at the moment. Uh, the rest will be coming online uh, as soon as the occupancies uh, dictate that. Uh, we have three conference rooms, which can uh, up to cinema style do around 120 packs. Uh, we have two restaurants on site, uh, one on the High Line, which is this one on the ninth floor, and then we have the Protea restaurant on ground floor. And then we also have co-working spaces, which should a guest require just to sit around and uh, do some work during the day, those spaces are available for that. As far as the hotel's uh, green certification is concerned, it, uh, we have a four-star grading with the Green Building Council and uh, so we're very proud of that um, and that's primarily for our efficiencies on the electricity and water side of it. He also outlines the development process and ethos for the hotel. From concepts, concepts started around five years ago. Uh, it was born out of uh, a trip to New York that some of our directors did. You'll see the building has very much an Art Deco style to it, uh, yet we've kept it intrinsically South African. Uh, you know, City Lodge Hotel Group's been such a you know, proud South African hotel group and we wanted to keep that and bring that into the hotel. Um, I personally started working on the project uh, to bring it to fruition uh, last year, around October. And um, so we had literally been October, November, December, and we opened up on the 1st of March this year. Natuk explains the unique features of this hotel and how it represents a reinvention for the group. Unique features are really about the food and beverage offering. Uh, the food and beverage, as you know, for the City Lodge Hotel Group has never really been a massive uh, part of our business. It's primarily we've offered great accommodation, great breakfasts. Uh, with, from this hotel, this is really going to be our first full service hotel in South Africa. Um, the, real great thing about it is that we've really launched two restaurants which offer fantastic uh, menus. Uh, the High Line offering a tapas style menu and then the Proteo restaurant on the ground floor which offers a full a la carte menu. Um, the High Line restaurant is really a more trendy, vibey atmosphere uh, where it's relaxed. You can come at the end of the day, have a glass of wine or finish up some work if you wanted to. Uh, whereas the Proteo is more of a sophisticated dining uh, experience on the ground floor. City Lodge Hotel Group Operations Food and Beverage General Manager Trevor Boyd outlines this reinvention further. Since the hotel group opened it's been a bed and breakfast facility and it's been it's been a great hotel offering fantastic place to sleep and a, a great breakfast in the morning depending which, which whichever ra uh, brand you're at whether it's Road Lodge, Town Lodge, City Lodge or the courtyards. Um, we've kind of started branch, branching out now. Um, never been able to offer food at the road lodges and town lodges and we've started slowly implementing menus for our guests in those two brands. The City Lodge, um, we, are, we are taking time out to train and upskill our staff and work with the facilities that we have to be able to offer a better presentation and offering to the guests. And then through the courtyard brands we've, we've got some fantastic places, um, fantastic hotels within Johannesburg, Pretoria and Port Elizabeth. And then we've got this magnificent hotel, which is, is sort of breaking territory for the City Lodge Group, having never had a hotel in this kind of league. And we are now competing against some of the big guys with a beautiful facility that offers a, a, a complete service of, of food, beverage, um, and, and a, a great place to stay as well. We, we are starting small. We are starting relatively aggressively in, in our two brands that never offered dinner which is it's a, it's a great place for us to start offering something that was never there and after 30 odd years to start a, a brand new offering with within our group is has, has been a great challenge for us it's been a great opportunity for us to be able to start playing in the game of all the other full service hotels and 
just just being there and and picking up where where some guys may have not not got part of the game running through the COVID um, pandemic. Um, we we've, we've done a lot of planning during the COVID pandemic to be able to be there and thereabouts as soon as the the guests are coming back to our hotels, whether it's locally or internationally. Latach details the impact of COVID-19 and how the brand has responded to this. COVID's naturally had a, a massive impact on the industry. It was really a big challenge for us to open this hotel right in the middle of COVID in March. And uh, for us really, we've mitigated all of those by implementing contactless points from using your cell phone to unlock your doors, from using apps to run the TVs and the air conditioners, um, the check-in process, your guest screening process, that's all done via QR codes. If you wanted to, the restaurants have uh, QR codes where you can view your menus. So we've really gone out to make sure we get it as contactless as possible um, and ensuring that we keep all those COVID screening protocols in place for a safe environment for our guests. Latig also touches on City Lodge's efforts to further increase its share of the local market and how this new hotel facilitates this. We've really always been focused on the domestic market. Uh, being a proudly South African hotel group, um, we've always had a real, uh, you know, a real baseline support from the South Africans. So for us really it's about growing that. It's about growing that market uh, for people who would never have stayed with us before because of the F&B offering. And I think this hotel allows us to do that. It gives us the opportunity to invite people that would normally stay in a four and a five star hotel to come and stay with us at the Courtyard Waterfall City and uh, experience what we have to offer. The 600,000 listed district heating project at the Wits University Junction Student Residence continues to exemplify the success of a solar co-generation project and how a relationship with Austria is being developed through a partnership facilitated by the South African Solar Thermal Training and Demonstration Initiative. Simon Litka, who visited the site, gives us more insights. While the aim of Soul Train is to support the target countries in changing from a largely fossil-based energy supply system to a sustainable supply structure based on renewable energy, Black Dot Energy Renewable Energy Engineer Wally Weber has said that the true beauty of the project was found in how the relationship with Soul Train bore fruit with investment in industry training and investment systems that enabled the industry to talk about district heating. He also tells us a bit more about this specific installation at the Witt Junction residency. The beauty of, of the, the whole storytelling of today was being able to stand in the success of this district heating solar cogeneration success story, which was documented in Engineering News in 2019. But being able to tell the storyline of how this whole relationship with the Austrian investment in the South African industry um, and particularly myself, evolved from doing a little small 500 litre commercial system for Zayd Afrikaans Hospital, the first solar uh, thermal system that I did as a demonstration system, and how that relationship and education and investment from the Austrian industry um, in training and demonstration systems actually enabled us to be at this site and talking about the district heating over the last decade and how it evolved from 500 litres to 5,000 litres to a 10,000 litre system for Wits residences to what we're seeing now, a 60,000 litre solar district heating system and how that came about. The beauty of the district heating and what we've been able to prove with the technology and, and what makes this so unique is thermal energy is, in my opinion, completely underestimated in the South African economy. People think of solar as being a rooftop geyser and shower water, where the amount of heat that is consumed in a South African economy in industrial heating, and majority of that heat below 100 degrees, it's insane how much coal-based power is being used in, in, in generating thermal energy. What makes this system unique is the fact that we were able to prove that district heating is viable in South Africa. This specific installation is two kilometers of thermal energy being moved across this campus. Shows us that the technology is ready to be uptaken by industry as well. Because if we can move thermal energy, 
which is so cheap. It's a bit of plumbing, it's a bit of water and liquid, but we can move thermal energy over vast distances. And also, obviously, we can store thermal energy. People have always had the concept that renewables is challenges, challenging because it's intermittent. Now we've shown we can store it. It's accessible at any point over a 24-hour cycle, and we can move it in huge um, quantities over vast distances. And I think that's what really made this specific district heating so special. Weber also gives us some more insights about the Austrian investment and how it influenced the success of the project. The Austrian investment, I like to really refer to that as a relationship more than, than financial. People think the moment you talk about financial investment, oh, so the technology is not viable, you need money. The Austrian investment has been a decade of a relationship building. So the first Soul Train program started with training a handful of individuals. And in fact, that training was for free. And it was on a principle of train the trainer. And that helped the whole process of getting momentum to train the industry on solar thermal. The investment has been in training. It has also been, so we, we now have had four Soul Train cycles. And this last cycle is in fact a million euros per year being invested in demonstration systems. Not loans, but as donor funding to demonstration systems. So the investment has really been for the South African industry, not just in terms of funding a few systems, but education, support in rolling out demonstration systems. Just on this site alone, we've had more than 240 visitors to come and see and experience the success story of solar thermal. So that is really just, for me, a better summary of what we've had with this decade of, of Austrian investment um, in solar thermal specifically. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next time for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.